Hello everyone, welcome again to our channel. The video today is to talk about uh, the prediction profiler, an overview about this tool in Jump because every time that we are running an analysis we come to this uh, part, this specific part, this quantitative analysis and we have, we face this prediction profiler and a lot of people uh, don't know how to interpret this, okay? So this is an overview about the prediction profiler. To perform, to record this video, I have here two data tables. Uh, these data tables, uh, one of them is about a DOE, an experiment that uh, was uh, run with eight factors, two response variables, and a linear regression where we had um, uh, seven different axes here and one response variable. Let's start with the DOE because this is more common. Uh, the, the situation is more common. For example, let's run here the fit model. We have two different response variables. We have here the 15 degrees of freedom. So we run this and we have here the prediction profiler. So this is the, the best part of the analysis because it's the moment that you can uh, play with your factors and understand what can happen if you fix them in some specific levels or uh, the other levels and so on. So you will try to predict the future of your project, process, or uh, service, okay? So the first thing that call our attention here is that you have one, two, three, four, five factors here. You have the others three factor here, and you have this desirability here. So this desirability is a function of the prediction profiler that you can uh, turn on or turn off here, for example. So I, I will record a specific video about this because uh, this uh, deserve a, a very special video, okay? So I will turn off here and I will work only with the factors uh, without any optimization. So how can we organize, how can we put this from here to here and work in the same level here. So you have a button here called appearance. So here in this appearance, you can arrange it in rows. I have eight factors. I'm gonna put here eight. So you have eight plots in the same level, okay? You can also arrange uh, these, reorder the x variables. For example, I, I want the a b being the last one. So you put the a here. So you can uh, reorder the x variables, the y variables. So let's organize this and continue. So how can we interpret this? So you can see some lines some um, ascending lines, descending lines. Uh, there are lines that the, the inclination here is uh, stronger than the other ones. It means that uh, this factor A for the response variable Y1 is, is stronger than this, for example, because the inclination of this line is is bigger okay so the effect of the change of the levels of these factors is stronger in this response than the others that there is no inclination at all okay the most the, the strongest uh, factor here for the y1 is the factor b because of this inclination okay so uh, you can change all the levels here, you can put everything that you want between minus and plus one, because these are the levels that you have 
for these specific factor, factors in your data table. Every single one here is uh, varying from minus one to plus one. So you can put plus or minus. So if I let this exactly the way it is right now, we are trying, we are predicting with our prediction expression the result in our response variables the moment that I put a in minus 1, b in minus 0 0.22, c in 0 0.78, d 0 0.86, e uh, plus 1, f 0 0.66 g minus 0 0.32 and h minus 0 0.66 okay so the prediction here is having the y number one uh, 110.255 and y number two 12.2125 okay so you can add uh, specification limits our reference lines here uh, as well as all other um, graphs that you have in jump and uh, what more can we see here you can have the interaction profiler here for the y1 and y2 okay you can uh, have or don't have the confidence intervals uh, for your prediction here uh, it's not appearing here because we are using all of the degrees of freedom that we had to complete this model okay so the r square for example is one let's take a look the r square is one because i i'm using every single degrees of degree of freedom for uh, this experiment so let's reduce this model and see what will happen let's choose one let's randomly uh, choose one here for example a d and remove so the moment that i removed the uh, degree of freedom called a d the interaction between a and d this R square is not 1 anymore, it's 0 0.99, and this R square is 0 0.92. So this model here, this 14 degrees of freedom now, is representing better this response variable than this response variable. So in the prediction profiler now we are having uh, confidence intervals. So let's take a look let's uh, rearrange the x here the y x and let's see the differences look that uh, uh, there is a shadow uh, around this line this is the confidence interval so i can turn off this here and i can turn on this again here so uh, the moment that you are having uh, degrees of freedom uh, for the errors, you have the uh, confidence interval. So you are trying to predict something, but now you have uh, confidence intervals. Okay, so this is something very, very powerful in jump. And another thing that is very, very powerful is the simulator. So you can simulate some variation for each single uh, uh, factor that you have in your DOE and simulate uh, numbers of runs and see what's happening uh, with your response okay so this is gonna be a, a new video specific for this kind of uh, analysis okay so let's take off here and what more can we see in the prediction profiler when the factors are not continuous so let's run another analysis let's run the analysis about the regression the linear regression 
look that we have different kind of factors here, for example, continuous factor, uh, ordinal factor, nominal factor. So let's run an analysis. Let's put here our y and let's put here our seven uh, different uh, degrees of freedom. I will minimize here all the things that are not important to this video, but we can have an idea how good is our model, okay? Because now, the moment that we turn on the prediction profiler, we will have a different situation. First of all, let's organize here the appearance, arranging rows, seven rows, okay, seven rows. And here, look what we have. We have uh, uh, not the lines anymore. We have some behavior here that seems to be not uh, linear, okay? Yes, because they are not continuous. The only factor, the only factor that is uh, continuous is the time plan in months. So you can predict, for example, uh, 11.5 months, okay? But you cannot predict, for example, 2.5 risks, 4.5, 10.2 risks. So this is an ordinal number. Uh, Jump understands that 10 is bigger than 9, that it is bigger than 8, and so on. So here, the confidence intervals here, they are little bars. So around this combination of factors, you will have these little bars. They are your confidence intervals that are running this, this uh, result here, okay? So you can plan, for example, uh, getting taking 10 risks in this project, uh, one year or 12 months uh, uh, the duration, no, uh, no or yes, the, if it was delayed or not. Uh, and four different suppliers, two different third parts um, paid and follow-up is monthly and areas involved are three. So the prediction of this result is $56,000, okay? So the intervals, the confidence intervals are around uh, minus third 374 and plus 486. So the data is not so good at all, right? And we can turn off this and all the situations here are a little bit different the moment that you are trying to uh, understand your data. Let's suppose, let's suppose that the, the column risk, you let this continuous as, as a continuous data because you have here the numbers, you have, for example, more than, more than uh, 10 different levels. So you decide to put this as a continuous data. So let's redo this calculation. So now you will have a linear uh, situation here, okay? Linear behavior. So a uh, jump will try to uh, predict values, for example, 11.48 risks, something that uh, it doesn't exist, but jump is trying to predict the, the result with these values. Okay, guys, so be careful with your data table. And this is an overview of the prediction provider. Let's talk about in the next video um, about the desirability functions. Bye-bye.